It takes grit to succeed, right? What I've put on here, and I hope you write it down, take the grit test, take the mindset test. You can, those are the, the uh, that's the uh, site for each of them. You will see where you come out on each of those tests. I am way on the uber end of growth mindset. It may be overconfidence, but I'd rather be on that end than at the, the lower end. And when we raise our girls, this is why it's so important, ladies, when we raise our girls, we need to raise our girls with not only grit, but a growth mindset. Think about this. I asked who were the first women to graduate from Ohio State and Ohio University. And think back to what I told you about the, I call it whining, it's probably not the politically correct word, but the whining I hear from some of our young people, our young lawyers. Think about Mary Frank Morrison Short, the first woman to graduate from The Ohio State University in 1879. She was the only woman in her classes, in the university, and yet she didn't allow that to stop her. And you know what she got her degree in? Microscopic chemistry. I imagine there are very few women today who hold a degree in microscopic chemistry. Yet in 1879, Mary Frank Morrison Short pushed forward to do that even though she was the only woman. Or Margaret Boyd, the first woman to graduate from Ohio University in 1873. Hate to say we were six years earlier than Ohio State, but we were. Um, <laughs> but, but, the re but think about the rooms they walked into. Think about what women were, women were regarded as property in the 19th century, and yet they didn't let that stop them. Fast forward to today, where I have a friend in Tampa. Her daughter is a very successful physician, and she... <laughs> My friend was with her daughter as they picked up her granddaughter from soccer, and everybody on the team got a trophy, um, even though they lost the game. And so as they're in the car driving back to the house, my friend's daughter turns to her daughter and says, you know you didn't deserve that trophy, right? You know your team didn't win, and you know you should have done this, this, and this, and even though they gave you that trophy, you didn't earn it. And my friend was like, oh my God. She said to her daughter later, she's like, don't you think that was a little harsh? And she said, mom, that's how you raised me. I need her to understand there is no trophy for just showing up. She needs to get that through her head now. If you're raising girls or have young girls in your life, that's what we have to teach them. So what do we know about women and mindset? This quote from Sheryl Sandberg, and I'm gonna tell you ladies, this is exactly how I felt when I was a first year at The Ohio State University's Law School. Every time I was called on in class, I was sure I was about to embarrass myself. And let me take this a little bit further. I didn't say, I didn't think I was just about to embarrass myself. I thought I was letting my whole race down. Because there were 225 students in my first year class and 11 of us were black. And we were divided into three sections. So my section of 90 had three black students. And I was confident that if I didn't know the answer to something, unlike my white colleagues, that I was letting the entire black race down. It was a ridiculous thing to feel, but I felt it to my core. I, I overstudied because of it, because I didn't want to be the person that pulled my people back. But as Cheryl said, you know, you get past that and you understand that everybody has that feeling that they walk out of a test thinking they did terrible and most often they did well. And you'll often find the people that walked out of the test thinking they did really well didn't. The difference was in the class, the people who spoke the most weren't always the brightest. And the people who were up there raising their hand, walking around with confidence, they trade careers with me and Kristen in a minute. Because yes, book smarts is required, so, but so is common sense. And your ability to get along with people while you're climbing the corporate ladder is hugely important. So many successful female lawyers display this growth mindset characteristic, but it's also been shown in women who are in other professions. And the other thing to understand, failure is part of the process. Most success, not most, all successful people have failed at something. You can ask Oprah Winfrey. J.K. Rowling was almost bankrupt when she wrote Harry Potter. Venus Williams, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Any number of people have failed 
before they became successful because you do learn more in failure than you learn in success. The key to when you fail is this, to be honest with yourself about why you failed. Don't blame others. When you fail at something, be willing to look yourself in the mirror and to be honest with yourself. What are those skills that I need to move past this point? Why was I not successful here? There's a man called Warren Bennis who wrote a book on, it's called On Becoming a Leader. And what Warren Bennis says is, if you want to be a leader, you first have to understand those skills that you have and the skills that you need to acquire. And so often we want to blame others for us not succeeding. We have to be honest with ourselves and all of us can continue to learn. If you work in a corporation and you can't read a balance sheet, take an executive MBA class. You can do those in a week. Whatever those skills are, commit to acquire them and don't blame somebody else for your lack of success.